The raping and pillaging of the natural world continues yet again, as we see yet another specimen of our natural history being sold off to who knows who and off to who knows where. Yup, come with me and get a little depressed to learn about a new Tyrannosaurus on the chopping block. Sotheby's is a British-founded American multinational corporation with headquarters in New York City. It is one of the world's largest brokers of fine and decorative art, jewelry, and collectibles. Though legal, sort of, at least in the majority of cases, sort of, it is a modern furnishing of quite old imperial practices in the selling of artifacts of importance. In the last few years, this auction house has sold off the remains of a ton of our world's ancient inhabitants to the highest bidding elite. Never mind, I, I gave them too much credit. Seriously, go check out their despicably treacherous list of scandals on Wikipedia. They have dealt in illegal antiquities since the 1990s, but since the company has existed since the 1700s, they were definitely doing this and far worse back in those days. In the 1990s, Sotheby's was trading in antiquities with no published provenance and continued to use dealers involved in the smuggling of artifacts. In 2012, the US Immigration and Customs Enforcement moved to seize a 10th century Cambodian sandstone statue from Sotheby's, alleging in a civil complaint before the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York that the company had put the work up for auction despite knowing that it had been stolen from a temple in Koh Kerr. The CEOs of the company stepped down in 2000 due to a price-fixing scandal. Then there was an auction error in 2011 in which Sotheby's sold a pair of sconces incorrectly attributed to Emile Jacques Ruhlmann. Oh, and guess what? The artifacts and fossils aren't the only areas of unethicality. In 2012, Sotheby's got a suit filed against them by art dealer Marc Jancou after the auction house pulled a work by Katie Noland that Jancou had consigned by the artist from a sale, apparently at her request. Then, there's an industrial dispute in 2015 positing that the auction house had outsourced its cleaning and other support services to Contract Cleaning and Maintenance, London Limited CCML, and like the usual capitalist ultra-elite company that it is, didn't really care about its workers, with the UVW union initiating a formal trade dispute over low pay, insufficient sick pay, and issues summarized in an early day motion signed by 24 members of parliament. Lastly, between 2016 and 2019, there were a slew of suits claiming Sotheby's had misled their traders and buyers. Suffice it to say, this is a bad company with bad practices and selling off pieces of history and natural history to the highest bidder regardless of the loss of knowledge to the rest of us. They don't care. They only care about themselves. Do not confuse the two and do not hold water for these weasels. A nice looking skeleton of a Gorgosaurus was recently sold by the auction house for anywhere between 5 and 8 million dollars. This is nothing compared to what they expect to fetch for just one chunk of the skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus. A Tyrannosaurus Rex skull unearthed in South Dakota is expected to sell for 15 million dollars or more at auction in New York next month, officials with Sotheby said Tuesday. The 200 pound, 91 kilogram skull fossil nicknamed Maximus is being sold December 9th by an owner who wishes to remain anonymous, the auction house said. No doubt trying to hide their unethical practices from the scientific community, like a weasel. 
The skull was unearthed in 2020 and 2021 in Harding County, South Dakota, where plenty other Tyrannosaur skeletons like Sue and Stan were found, according to Cassandra Hatton, Sotheby's head of science and popular culture. She called the area the world capital of T-Rexes. A canned response, such a fun fact. Most of the rest of this Tyrannosaurus' remains were destroyed over time by erosion, but Sotheby's experts said the skull was a major find. Hayton noted, when you think about it, there are more people that can fit a skull in their home than there are people who could fit a full dinosaur, which does not explain the exorbitant price. Let's put this into perspective. Sue the Tyrannosaurus sold for $8 million in 1997. That was 1997 money, but it was also the first time a dinosaur specimen as complete and important as Sue was put up for auction. Put up for auction so publicly, and the first time such a thing sold for so much money. Though it was not the first, nor the spark for bartering in pieces of our natural history, with most old museums taking part in the practice in the 18 and early 1900s, it sparked the modern trade in large and important dinosaur fossils. Since Sue, prices have gone up and up, pricing most museums out of the running for saving these pieces of our natural history from the quiet destruction of private ownership. Stan the Tyrannosaurus was also sold recently for far more than Sue did, despite Sue being a more important specimen. Stan went for $32 million, making it the new record breaker for wasting money on a real fossil that can easily fall apart in your mansion. You have to be the dumbest sack of rocks of a rich person to want to own a dinosaur skeleton when you can commission a casting company to make a full dinosaur skeleton in just about any pose you want for literally a fraction of the price. It blows my mind. How did these people even manage to get the money they have to waste on a priceless piece of our natural history? Oh right, generational wealth. Cool, very nice. Forgot you didn't have to have merit. Anyway, the Maximus Tyrannosaurus is literally just a skull. A skull. A noggin that is going for twice as much as the full skeleton of the far completer and more important Sue, and almost half as much as the full skeleton of Stan, in today money too. Maximus's six and a half foot, two meter skull is supposedly about 76 million years old, which doesn't totally make sense, and supposedly still has most of the external skull bones and numerous teeth, Sotheby's experts said. The thing here is, no one can take their word for granted, as they never publish literally anything about the fossils they sell. Who knows where this thing came from exactly, how much of the skull on display is original fossil and how much is fabricated. Who knows what, if any of it is fabricated, it is based on. Are you buying a collage of fossil and resin? A full real fossil skull? Oh well. Hatton, who has sold their soul to the devil of our time, said, two large puncture holes in the skull are evidence of a big fight, probably with another Tyrannosaurus. We don't know that this is what caused the death of this animal, but we can tell that it did have a major battle during its lifetime. Marks on the skull are interesting to study because they give us an idea about what life was like during the Cretaceous period, Hatton said. This specimen may not be headed to a research institution though. It's the ultimate trophy, Hatton said, to place in one's home. Ugh. So on top of being another new specimen to add to the matrices of scientists trying to understand this animal, it also may preserve the remains of behavior in the form of puncture marks made by predator or prey. I think that is enough to count as an important specimen. Important on top of being already important for being a Tyrannosaurus. How glib do you have to be and devoid of empathy or care for the world around you to call this incredibly important piece of our past as just a trophy? And just a trophy to put in your house. Disgusting. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman.